Actually, I think that the time uh, passes so quickly. Uh, now it's about time to wrap up uh, today's uh, presentations. Uh, let me uh, do very briefly uh, the wrapping up of the, your presentations. So group number one, uh, you uh, created the word globagement, uh, if I pronounce it correctly, and uh, which means a kind of tool for internationalization. And also, he uh, mentioned that how we can make use of uh, current as well as uh, future resources, including capacity building and enhancement of the engagement of academics and other people, and securing funding, and also advancing strategic alliances with our prospective or current partners. And group two, uh, analyzed why international PR is so important, and he identified the driving factors like uh, reputation or human resources of funding, and also the, of course, the rankings, whether we like it or not, and also uh, he identified the audience or stakeholders like. Uh, uh, traditional ones and also non-traditional ones. And we discussed uh, what measures could be taken to enhance the international PR and how those impacts could be measured and also uh, the ch possible challenges those international PR would be faced. And one of the biggest ones would be the budget cuts. Okay. And uh, following those presentations comes uh, the group number three. Uh, they talked about the difficult, uh, the stu how we could uh, support students with difficulties. And they categorize uh, the kinds of difficulties into four kind of dimensions like uh, prevention, preparedness, response, and recovery. And um, the importance of maintaining and updating manual uh, was also mentioned. And what I thought was interesting is that uh, they talked about those things in terms of the maintenance of sustainable relation or sustainable communication among uh, people concerned, like um, those relations between host and home universities, students and staff members, and so on. And also they make a proposal to set up some network to share necessary information and data. And uh, group number four, uh, he stressed the importance of face-to-face -face interaction. And um, also uh, he proposed some ways to uh, set up the synergetic network, uh, which is a goal-oriented one including database platform, updated manual, and from A to Z kind of uh, dictionary. And I think uh, this is kind of a uh, university-wide project, may I say. Uh, but uh, if possible, uh, why don't we think about making those things uh, nationwide or worldwide even? I think this will be a good thing. We can share those basic information uh, first among our international offices, and then uh, we could share those kind of uh, information or data uh, campus-wide or na nationwide or worldwide. Okay, and finally, uh, group number five, uh, they discussed why it, uh, it's necessary to build a sustainable relations and international um, I cannot read my memo. I don't <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so they discussed the importance of building uh, the internationalization network. And they also picked up some hindrance factors or obstacles uh, which has been preventing the promotion of internationalization um, within the university. Like, uh, it is something like a lack of ownership or lack of engagement, or lack of synergy institutional-wise, and also the lack of integration 
of uh, all those factors within the single institution. And also, uh, they have actually presented uh, concrete measures and tactics uh, to, so with which we can overcome the obstacles uh, and enhance the internationalization. And idealistically speaking, there will be no more need for the international office once the internationalization of their campus is really, really uh, realized. <laughs> but uh, maybe uh, it's very difficult to realize <laughs> that kind of thing. Of course, we're going to t uh, keep on trying, but my own uh, feeling is that at least we need to have one very special international office who are really an expert or experts to handle the real core thing of the international things. And of course, the basic things uh, could be or should be shared uh, university-wide among all the co uh, community members of the university, uh, ranging from faculty members uh, to students, and of course, including the uh, administrators, uh, so that we could really boost up the uh, standard of internationalization at a home university. And speaking a little about uh, Kyoto University, we have just uh, set up an international platform uh, which uh, consists of the members from uh, the representatives from uh, university administrators, including the staff members from International Affairs Office, International Student Office, uh, Industrial PR Office, and the Research Administration Office, and so on. And we actually meet regularly uh, every Monday during their lunchtime. And uh, well, I, I'm sure you, you, can, you are now imagining a very fun kind of meeting every uh, Monday at lunchtime, but uh, it's not that uh, relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, <laughs> Meeting is a meeting, not a lunch, <laughs> lunch and party. And also, uh, almost every time, our executive vice presidents are present too. So we're kind of, everyone's a bit nervous. But at least we could uh, try to, we can try to, we, were, we have been trying to share uh, necessary information, uh, like a calendar, or very uh, important things among ourselves. Uh, but uh, recently, we have been trying to expand those uh, international platform to uh, reach to even to the faculty members or departments or schools. Otherwise, uh, the internationalization or the uh, sharing of necessary things is limited, uh, so to speak, within the area of the university administration, which is the headquarters. So we have been trying to expand uh, that into the uh, university-wide one, but Let's wait and see what happens. <laughs> okay, uh, so so much for the wrap up, and thank you so much, everyone, for your very um, great contribution. Without your contribution, uh, I think uh, the success of this workshop uh, has not been achieved. So um, may I ask everyone to give your big hands to yourself. <laughs> <laughs>